Hey guys, Austin here, um, showing off a new tool that is the eTabs to Revit connection tool. It uh, mimics the RAM to Revit tool that I made last time. Um, the way this works is under eTab or under Revit. Let's show off the, where the button exists. I have added a new button that says E2R begin transfer of data. If you click on that, um, same sort of process um, as the, the RAM to Revit tool. Um, I have set up basically everything so far. And if you click map the beams uh, with this window, and then you can see I've got uh, eTabs beams in red or in blue, and then I've got Revit uh, beams in red. Um, if you click map the beams, um, let's just do this real quick. Um, this flags um, any discrepancies that maybe uh, exist between the two programs. So let, let's take a look at um, these ones are important, the ones that uh, have comments. You can see here in, in Revit, it's saying that I have a 30K12, but in eTabs, I've got a 30K10. So if I turn this off, you can see in Revit or in eTabs, I've got a 30K10. And then if I turn back on Revit, uh, 30K12. So that, that's something that the engineer should review. Um, other items, if, if the mapped parameter is not, is not checked, that means that it went and tried to find a beam in, in Revit um, that was in the same location as, as eTabs, um, but it could, not, it could not find a match. So let's go see why that is. So you can see I've got a beam right here. Um, in eTabs, its length is about 35 feet. And then if I turn on Revit, um, I think the, the issue here is that this beam is just a little bit shorter. Um, so that's something that the, uh, that the engineer should review um, just to make sure that we're in, in agreement. The other thing I'm noticing, um, because it wasn't mapped, um, I've got a W24 by 62 versus a 36 by 135. The other nice feature is this this has some transparency sliders. You can you can see there's some some differences in the framing layout on the uh, eTabs model versus the Revit model. And then you can make a, a judgment call if, if you care about that. That's the tool. Um, I'll go a little bit more into the nitty gritty on the buttons if you want to stick around. Um, gather eTabs grids, that's self-explanatory. That goes into your eTabs model. Um, and pulls out all the grid data. Um, so you can see R1, R3, R2. The other thing to note that is that this eTabs model is rotated 90 degrees from, from where the, the Revit model is created, and the, the tool can handle that. So you can see R1, R1 R3, R2. Um, select eTabs beams. The way this button works is it will grab the current selection uh, that you have in here. So um, let's just for fun all select less elements. You can see I've got 46 frames selected. If I hit this select eTabs beams, it reduces the quantity. Um, this, uh, these grids are clickable. So if you click on here, um, you can select the grids that you want. This tool comes in handy for the calculate X, Y, and rotation button. Um, next item, gather grid, self-explanatory, same thing, uh, clickable again. So, um, I know that A1 matches between the two software. And then one thing to note, um, this, this tool helps figure out what these offsets should be. It's really good at figuring out the X and the Y. It struggles a bit on rotation. You can see um, it, it wants to make this number 270 when I click this button, but um, I know it needs to be minus 90. Basically, I need to rotate the uh, eTabs coordinates in into Revit minus 90 degrees. And then there's this nice button. You can save this. It makes a JSON file of, of these values. Uh, and let's just say, you accidentally deleted a whole bunch of this stuff and you forgot what it needed to be. You can import it and it writes those, those values in. Um, and then the select uh, Revit beams, uh, again, prompts you to select Revit beams. You can do that. Um, come back over to here. You can see it's now just 72. Um, and then same thing, map the beam. There should be less things in here. My selection is different, um, but same sort of principle. Um, and that's the tool. 
Um, there's an about page here. Um, if you run into any issues, feel free to click this button. It'll open up your email and uh, send an email to me uh, for any issues you may have. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thanks for using the tool. I'm looking to actively support it. So um, if you run into any bugs, please let me know.